her mom goes to church with Dog the Bounty Hunter. So now they're going to surprise her husband who wants to do a hunting TV show with a surprise visit from Dog the Bounty Hunter. How do you go to church with Dog the Bounty Hunter? You'd be like, all right, today we'll be talking. Um, I'm sorry, everybody. I hate to interrupt my sermon. Uh, is Hulk Hogan dressed as Jean Benet Ramsey in the third row of the left? Can y'all see that? Y'all see the horror that is that person there in the third row? God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because other jobs drug test. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. You know who? Pop Scare! <laughs> is that how Pop Scares work? Yep, <laughs> sure right? is. Well, as long as you do that every seven or eight minutes. Okay, there you go. There you go. Yeah, you got yeah. it. And sitting Pop 900... Scare. <laughs> 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. I watched a movie full of Heath Pop scares and and specifically <laughs> Heath Pop scares. So yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> yeah, one of the guys looks way too much like me. It's not yeah, what? And, and he's the what? pop scare guy, if you can believe that. Also the bully and the worst character in the history of cinema. Okay, <laughs> we'll get to him though. But he's funny. He's a wild card. <laughs> but before we get to him, we're also joined by our special guest masochist, Michael Marshall, is the project director at the Good Thinking Society, the host of Be Reasonable, the co-host of Skeptics with a K, the editor of The Skeptic. And at this point, his resume might as well also include regular GAM guest. Marsh, welcome back, sir. Hey, good to be here. Always a pleasure to be on. And I'm glad you uh, you put me through. This is the most boring experience, not the show, the, the film that we're talking about. It was one of the most boring experiences <laughs> of my life. So I'm, I'm glad to be able to share it with you. Yeah, I'm glad that we were able to share it with you. Man. So, <laughs> not you, not the podcast. I like this. This is fun to talk about. The most boring experience I've ever had. I will say a lot of my notes are how do we explain this phenomenon to Michael Martin? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So, tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Hunter's Creed. It's the, it's the story of not understanding Blair Witch. It, they they created footage in the woods. They realized it's terrible, and then I think they pretended to lose it so that they could then find it, and then now it's a good movie because it's found footage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and God or something. Something like that. <laughs> and Eli, how bad was this movie? <laughs> well, if you loved Blair Witch, but those teens wandering around the woods touching stuff and pissing off a supernatural entity for no reason were too dang likable, <laughs> you will love this movie. It's the uh, Son of a Bitch Project? There you go. <laughs> it's the Prayer Witch Project. Way better. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, damn. If they, That's only not the title because they didn't think of it. Okay. Exactly. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Now, I should, I should also emphasize just kind of a, a, a trigger warning. I mean, just triggers this time. <laughs> this movie's about hunting. So to any listener who happens to enjoy hunting, I want to warn you in advance that, you know what, you're used to it. So never mind. I just, I'm going to talk about how fucked up your animal murder hobby is a lot and you're used to it. OK, <laughs> so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to say best worst understanding of what B-roll means oh, or does <laughs> or does or anything about that concept entirely. So one of these hunter guys clearly like read about B-roll the day before they made their stupid fucking YouTube movie and they're convinced they have to use it. So like a bunch of different times, maybe a dozen times in this movie, we just get 10 seconds of nothing with a camera just looking at a tree in the woods for no reason yep. and nothing else happens. Yep. Yep. I'm going to say best worst review. I had a little bit of a Googling around uh, on this to really understand what the hell I was actually watching here, what it was meant to be. And I came across, you know, Dove do a reviews mm, of, of Christian movies. I'm sure you guys have covered it plenty of times. Oh, yeah. The Dove review for this film is amazing. It includes the line, although the movie is not entertaining in the conventional way, it does feature scenes which will prompt the viewer to think. <laughs> And that's a positive thing. <laughs> Which is amazing. <laughs> oh, their mom is so proud of them for coming up with that. <laughs> we're not talented, ha ha, but we're, you know, we made a movie, technically. The movie had a lot of minutes in it. Uh, <laughs> How did they learn all those lines? <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Uh, it's incredible. It's such a great review. So I'm going to go back to the Heath character and I'm going to say best worst evangelism. Right. So there's this one character that's trying like one of the characters isn't Jesus enough and another character is trying to Jesus him up. And this dude might as well like hold his face in a urinal until he promises to love Jesus again. This guy is such a bastard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'll get there. The extent to which that's almost accurate is mm. absurd. He might mm. he might go beyond that. Yeah, yes. honestly, yeah, right. Like yeah. ethically, actually, he goes way beyond that. We've literally yeah. no uh, no way of knowing whether he went beyond it or not. <laughs> the, the twist <laughs> of the movie might be that he resorts to chemical warfare. <laughs> Spoiler <laughs> alert. And see, I was going to go, I'm going to take the low-hanging fruit. Best worst, mega star mm -hmm. appearance. <laughs> mm. So, as we hinted when we teased this movie last week, Hunter's Creed managed to beg none other than Dog the Bounty Hunter for this movie. For the first and last scenes of this movie and <laughs> no the fuck thing else. Yes. <laughs> what, I, like, is one of them mildly friends with a friend of the dog and he was just like, yeah, yeah all right. You, uh, I'll do like four minutes. You can put bookend the movie with me at the front and the back. <laughs> How much money do you not have when you can't afford all the way dog the bounty hunter? Right. <laughs> well, so so I guarantee you what happened is this whole movie was made, right? They made their little Blair Wish found footage thing and then somehow mm -hmm. dog the bounty hunter found out about it and, and agreed to like throw some money in it or whatever, but he had to be in it, right? So they did this <laughs> sloppy ass effort to sneak him into the beginning and the end of the film, right? Yeah. So th they had dog money? Like, this was made with extra budget from Dog, you think? No, no, no. I think that the movie was already made. I think it was distributed with extra money from Dog. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so like they were like, hey, our Blair Witch movie fucking sucks. Uh, did anyone, and I do mean anyone on Earth, <laughs> have any interest in it? And they were like, well, Dog the Bounty Hunter fell asleep in that backer screening that we did. <laughs> so he's technically still in the room. <laughs> Let's wake him up and film him for four minutes and see if he'll right. let us use it. It's <laughs> such a weird thing to have him inserted into it as well, or to insert himself into it, because he plays himself as well. Yeah. And the only thing he has to do with any acting, he's very clearly reading the lines from just oh, off the yes. side of the camera the entire time. It's it's such a strange <laughs> cameo. And you know that there was an early and quickly aborted attempt to make him a character in the movie, right? There was an afternoon of shooting where he was like, hi, I'm Bog the Downy Hunter. Uh, nope. Oh, I messed it again. I messed it again. It's not a wig. Stop tugging on it. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll tell you what. This movie is in no hurry at all to get started. So I think we're okay taking a quick break, but we'll be back in a minute with all the exciting waiting around that is Hunter's Creed. Hey, podcast listener. If you've been listening to this show for a while, you know that unlike this week's movie, I'm a big fan of getting the mental health care you need, which is why I'm so happy to tell you about this week's sponsor, BetterHelp. Maybe you haven't started therapy because finding a therapist can be really tricky and expensive. Well, BetterHelp assesses your needs and matches you with your own licensed professional therapist, and you can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. Maybe you've held off getting therapy because you need someone who's queer affirming or sex work positive, and that's hard to find in your area. Well, BetterHelp offers a broad range of expertise, which might not be locally available in many areas. Heck, maybe you've even tried therapy in the past, but you had a bad experience. I know I have. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. Plus, it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's BetterHelp.com slash awful. Get the help you need today. Get you. Get you listening. Yeah, I'm talking to you. And do it. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm No Illusions. I'm Heath Enright. And I'm Michael Marshall. You know... As dedicated skeptics, it's important that we face the truth wherever we find it. So when we found out this week that our very own Michael Marshall stole his vaccine from an old lady, we had to face the truth head on. 
What? What? No, that's not what happened. That is not yes, true. I yes, did not. It, yes, it that's is. That's why we created Marsh Stola's vaccine from an old lady dot com because you deserve the truth. <sighs> God, not another website. That's right. Marsh Stola's vaccine from an old lady dot com. We not only have the truth about Marsh stealing his vaccine from an old lady there, we also have a picture of a cat. And you're not allowed to lie on a website with a picture of a cat on it. That's illegal. Exactly. Oh, great. It's optimized for mobile. Great. Yes, it is. So if you deserve the truth, go to Marsh Stole His Vaccine from an old lady dot com and join the fight today because nobody should steal their vaccine from an old lady, but especially not Marsh because he created COVID in the first place. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. This looks like it was really expensive. Was. Dude, did you use the company card for this? No. Okay. Too slow. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up with a company logo that looks like a Rednecks in Memoriam tattoo for Evil Knievel. So you know this one's going to be fun. Right? Oh, God, it's so cheap looking. It's, I'm sure that's like a po- It looks way more like a podcast logo. It's got a kind of a microphone in the middle, and it looks like yeah. the podcast logo that like Joe Rogan would have rejected as being a bit too on the nose. That's what it looked like to me. <laughs> so patriotic. Yeah, so, so we open on Dog the fucking bounty hunter and i just all my notes at this point is like i am not compensated sufficiently to look at this ridiculous human i refuse to do it <laughs> luckily he won't be in it for long no he looks no he won't he looks like <laughs> the laziest drag of farrah fawcett anyone's <laughs> ever done <laughs> yeah he, he looks like uh mickey rock from the wrestler but somehow more so yeah, yeah. right, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and he's being interviewed by what, a news person or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I love the question from the news person. They just say, so why? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, Doug gets that a lot. He gets the question <laughs> just open-ended why constantly. Just like, well, that I mean, you just look at him, just, just kind of wave your hand a little bit and go, why? That's a perfectly reasonable <laughs> question. He's wearing wraparound sunglasses on his forehead at night. And they keep falling down as he's talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he, he's got them every single time we see him, I think, as well. Yep. So, so the the few other times that we see him, he's wearing them. And it got to a point where I start to think that his eyes were actually up there. Like those moths have <laughs> got eyes on their wings. It was just, yeah, you, you look down, but those aren't the real ones. He's, he's, right, he's going right. to camouflage. He had those installed so his face looked more normal. Boy, that would explain a lot about his hairline, too. Yeah, all right. All right. Good for hostage situations. They blindfold you, but they don't realize. Now you're actually, you're actually fine. <laughs> The most useless cyberpunk change of all time. I evolved these. So, <laughs> I have gills, too. <laughs> all right. So then we cut. Oh, we have the ridiculous. Is it a horror movie? No psych moment. Right. T- to open it up. <laughs> but they're stupid. So they don't know how to do it. <laughs> because what you're supposed to do in that moment is like, oh, stop. Up and then it turns and they're like playing in a pool, but it's just like no! <laughs> yes, which, which yeah. you would absolutely not do during playful flirting with your husband. Right? <laughs> yeah, and she screams, and it, the scream is a lady genuinely scared, and then she starts giggling. But the giggle seems to me like a lady who is still scared, but away she can't, <laughs> uh, where she can't run away from this guy. So now she has to pander her way out of this. It's like, oh, you! Oh, <laughs> I'm sure you don't mean that. Oh, I'm, my friend's coming just any second now. That's what it sounded like to me. <laughs> Well, so they're walking across this. They're like in a like a swamp or something. They're walking across this this uh, wooden walkway that sits over top of the water, and it's such a crazy, wild, jarring difference that at first I assumed whoever was screaming just sunk below the water before we panned <laughs> over. And this was another couple. Ha ha! We got her. You know, giggle, giggle, or something. But no, they're just trying to do the whole. It's a horror, but not, but not yet. Pop scare. Okay, <laughs> we're, we're doing it right. And I didn't realize at the time that this was going to be a found footage movie. So I thought that was just how we were opening, that they just happened to be videotaping this lovely moment together. I guess this is supposed to be their wedding day. Yeah, yeah. This is their wedding day that they're self-filming. Is that is that a thing? You walk around <laughs> right. your wedding day with your own video camera on you? He's got a GoPro attached to his chest like the hunter outfit <laughs> around his tuxedo vest. Yeah, <laughs> All right, so yeah, so they're looking around, and, and one of, of course, this main character, this is Dave. He goes, "Wow, nature is so beautiful that atheism is definitely wrong." Huh? 
He steps in a bunch of bear shit. He's like, you know what? Never mind. There is no God. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he talks about how beautiful the deer is. And then he wants to kill it. And his wife's saying, you, you see something that beautiful. And the first thing you think about is hunting and killing it. And this is right after we've seen her screaming in terror. And I'm certain it's not just the deer who is the beautiful <laughs> thing about to be killed by him here. I'm 100% certain. <laughs> so. Also, he calls his wife Mrs. Dave Johnson or whatever his name is. Yeah. That's all. If you call your wife misses your name, you should get killed by a deer somehow. Every person does that. <laughs> oh, there are Fuck so you. many things that every character in this movie should get killed by. All right. So still with the found footage bullshit, we cut to Christmas, the moment where he gave her that ugly ass fucking cross necklace. This absolutely needs to be on the Christian movie bingo card. Ugly crucifix jewelry. Yeah, it's like I, I wanted to thank this movie for easing my feelings of inadequacy and selecting jewelry for Lucinda. I always feel like I'm doing it wrong, but I'm like, ah, I could be wronger at least. Oh, God, no, I, I just I noticed this in, in your notes. Heath, this is where you had this realization so much quicker than I did that this was all going to be. Some oh, footage. I was furious. I was like, oh, good. OK, it's two scenes. in a row. The whole movie's going to be Blair Witch. I'm so fucking angry. I have to watch the rest of this now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was exactly the same. It, I, was, yep. I was livid by this point already. And, and I was certain he was the killer. I, I was certain he was going to be a killer. He creeps <laughs> up on her in this scene. It's really weird. He hand, hands her the box. And I thought, that's going to have like a deer's ear in it or something equally macabre. <laughs> it turns out it was a cross. So yes, equally macabre. It was a torture device. But this is just... The, I was certain <sighs> this was the footage they found after he killed her that I was like, oh, you know, he seemed like such a nice guy. The neighbors say he kept himself to himself. But then we found right. this. And, you know. <laughs> Did you get me Dog the Bounty Hunter's head in a box? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, and then we cut to fucking them doing a Carol Baskin, hey, you cool cats and kittens shtick, but for their <laughs> hunter show. Yeah, <laughs> they do. And so <laughs> I guess her mom, the, the plot here is, because we're going to force Dog the Bounty Hunter back into this. Her mom goes to church with Dog the Bounty Hunter. So now they're going to surprise her husband who wants to do a hunting TV show, a hunting reality show with a surprise visit from Dog the Bounty Hunter, the <laughs> reality show celebrity. How, how do you go to church with Dog the Bounty Hunter? And how You'd be like, all right, today we'll be talking. Um, I'm sorry, everybody. I hate to interrupt my sermon. Uh, is Hulk Hogan dressed as Jean Benet Ramsey in the third row of the left? Can y'all see that? Y'all see the horror that is that person there in the third row? Do you guys see his eyes? They're all the way at the top of his face. They're above his eyebrows. That's we won't let him wear the glasses in here. It's so. just very obvious that there's not a God if he still exists. So <laughs> y'all want to fuck, huh? So they have him jump out and scare him, right? Where he's like, oh, what is your name? Or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Dog, Dog no, he's, he, Hunter has he, like a, he bear hugs him and yells, what's your favorite TV show? Oh, my God. I wanted so bad for this guy to just kill Dog with Krav Maga. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, just, sorry. See, I, th th this is why you don't do blindfold things. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> it always goes bad. I kill somebody every time. But he reacts with wait I cannot believe that this is acting I think they surprised <laughs> this actor with Dog the Bounty Hunter and to be fair it is a very realistic performance of being grabbed by surprise by Dog the Bounty Hunter <laughs> which is that you urinate curl into a fetal position and die yeah and, and look straight at the camera and yell why is he here yeah 100% yeah. <laughs> this actor did not know Dog the Bounty Hunter was going to be there so, yeah, so then they go to make some Heath coffee and chat about the complexities of reality TV. Oh, OK. <laughs> they do not make Heath coffee. They OK. So first thing I saw was, yeah, all right, they got a Chemex. Nice. I like a Chemex. Cool. Yeah. But then we watch them try to make coffee and it's there's an inch of mud already at the bottom of the thing. <laughs> and then they make no coffee and just pour the old mud in. He, he's just <laughs> holding the, the filter and squeezing it out. It's so stupid. He squeezes the coffee out of the Chemex filter like he's juicing an orange yeah. into Dog the Bounty Hunter's <laughs> cup and then very clearly looks at Dog the Bounty Hunter like, please don't drink that. This is my wife's <laughs> fancy coffee pot that I don't know how to use. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
But what is this? What I was so confused about. Why why are we watching Dog the Bounty Hunter talk in detail about the laborious process of pitching a TV show? Like I was wondering whether this was going to turn into like an instructional video at this point <laughs> to, to show people who are trying to pitch a pilot. Right. Well, yeah, it, so, you know, because this is obviously, like, added last minute because they got the chance to throw in this cameo, and they're like, oh, yeah, reality show, this fits perfectly, right? But I love that between everybody involved in this, they can't come up with what, uh, like, the concept of their show would be other than <laughs> we kill shit, right? And they've got to have that for this line. So it, Dog the Bounty Hunter sits down, he says, I got to tell you, I love the idea you have about your show, about, you know, it being good, <laughs> and, and God, he mentions God and family. God, Those are family and number one hunting show ever made. That's a really good business model. Like yeah, that all works. Exactly, it would be the best show. <laughs> he also, he's one of those Christian guys, and we all know this person who says "I love you" a lot, and they don't mean like "I love you." It's just like a church phrase, like you wrap things up. Yeah, except. He does it starkly at the end of the conversation and it just ends on a terrible silence. He's like, yeah, no, this is going to be a great show. I love you. <laughs> and then there's a pause while the guy is fucking squeegeeing out the Chemex filter and he's just like, oh, I love spending time with you too, Dog the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> how, do you, how do they think coffee is made, I wonder? Like, how many takes did it take? Like, how many ridiculous things did they do to coffee beans before they got whatever they landed on as, oh yeah, I think this is how it works. <laughs> well, it's either that or they've had to do so many takes because Dog the Bounty Hunter keeps fucking up that they've ran right. out of all of the coffee and they, they, they will, well, I can sort of use what's left at the bottom if you don't look at it too carefully. <laughs> Let's just get this through, man. <laughs> that may very well be it. So, and then we see the inherent problem with trying to do a found footage fucking movie, which is inevitably you come up with scenes that there's no goddamn reason why you would have footage of it. <laughs> so now we cut to the husband, Dave, doing like some surprise, hey, I'm videotaping you at the gynecologist, you know. With <laughs> this no. made me laugh so much because they went straight from, we're making a hunting show pilot, hard cut, her in a doctor's office. And yeah. I thought, oh, that, that went badly then. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be like, just pan over to see your husband shot a hole in his foot. <laughs> <laughs> also, he's clearly not filming at the gynecologist because it's there's there's clearly somebody holding a camera yep. right next to them badly on purpose to look like Blair Witch. We actually at one point see all four of their hands in the shot that they're supposed to <laughs> <Yep>. be <laughs> selfie shooting. It's <laughs> so stupid. They did such a half-assed job. And, and everyone does, right? Even like the high-budget found footage movies always fuck this up, but they fuck it up so bad. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. But this is where they're going to learn that she has the cancer. <laughs> I shouldn't have found this as amusing as I did. But again, he's being all cute and like kissing her belly. And then the doctor walks in with, I have some difficult news. And I, I laughed out loud. I am a bad person. <laughs> but the juxtaposition just creased me up. <laughs> well, and it's because they set this up as like, a, oh, we can't wait to find out about the baby. What she got? She tested positive in a pregnancy test and they came in and they were like, nah, and apparently if you just have a tumor big enough, that thing comes out as a little blue line. <laughs> it's a baby tumor, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, she goes, hey, I have some difficult news. I'm like, is it that we're only seven and a half minutes into this fucking thing? <laughs> <laughs> And then the movie blacks out for like 15 seconds. Like they forgot to keep going. And then they're like, oh, sorry, movie, so, uh, movie. And then they come back in. <laughs> Nothing happens. Yeah. So it, we, we eventually come back to her all cancered up. Now she's fully cancered and she's trying to make the most out of her cancer. So she's going to ambush Dave as he walks in with this squirt gun she has. <laughs> and Noah, I, I hate to push back on your description because that was a good scene introduction, but she's not fully cancered yet. She's <laughs> hat and gloves cancer. She'll be scarf head cancer. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know that phase where you still have your hair, but you always have to wear a hat and gloves. <laughs> yeah. But they, they give us the transition between those two fa phases of cancer in this scene, to be fair, you know, continuity wise. Mm -hmm. She's doing the prayer and she's like, Oh, I'd like to thank God for all the amazing <coughs> <coughs> cancer cough, cancer. I have cancer. <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I have cancer. Thank you, God, for all the amazing uh, non-cancer stuff in my life. I don't know. <laughs> well, what's great is she does the the eponine cough, right? She's like, eh -huh, eh -huh, and he's like, nurse, nurse. And I really wanted the nurse to run in and for him to be like. 
She coughed. And then there's people like, <laughs> yeah, man. She's got fucking cancer. Yeah, she, she's going to do Bill's that. She's going to do that. <laughs> but it, it is nice to actually see a live cancer momming because normally in Christian films, the cancer mom happened before. Right. It's nice to see this process yeah. really playing out. Yeah, exactly. And they had to do something to get to that hour and 23 minute runtime. Yeah. <laughs> and that was with 10 minutes of Dog the Bounty Hunter cut in. Well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of which, so now we get that video. Okay, this is so amazing. So Dog is trying to do this heartfelt video that he's sending to the young couple that he met, you know, of sympathizing with her cancer diagnosis. But he's such a bad actor that he has to constantly stop to check his lines just off <laughs> camera, like do the whole fucking scene. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to send like selfie style videos to be like, sorry, your wife died. Anyway, <laughs> hit that like and subscribe for my camera. <laughs> but they blend genres so insanely here. Because Dog the Bounty Hunter's wife really did die of cancer, which means one of two things has to have happened in this universe. One, they were like, Dog, maybe you could talk about when your wife died of cancer and we'll put it in our fiction pretend movie. Or Dog, again, fell asleep during the screening, <laughs> woke up here and was like, you know, if you want, I'll make a genuine heartfelt video where I cry and talk about the death of my wife and you can put it in your horror movie. <laughs> yeah, it's like um, that famous selfie that a monkey took, you know, there's no real thought going on behind it. He just picks up the tool, press the button and, and that's what comes out. There's no cogent thought there. No sentience. Also, what is the concept here? Because the concept is this is found footage, presumably on the same camcorder, the same, you know, the same video camera. And if yeah. that's the case, did Cancer Mom send Dog the camera to take this on and then he sends it back, FedExes it back to the hospital so she can carry on. <laughs> she had a spy following around Dog the whole time. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Well, again, that's the problem with found footage, right? Because like, yeah, in reality, you would send them a fucking text or you'd call the motherfucker, mm. but yeah, they got to... Visit gotta, the hospital. If you're that visit the hospital, it's fine. You're allowed in. Well, not right now, but, but Dog at the quick stop. Use the clerk's cam. There's so many ways around this. <laughs> And he has to end on his catchphrase, but sad. So he's like, sorry to hear about your cancer, brother. Al Aloha. <laughs> yes. Aloha. So fucking yes, weird. But a sad aloha. Though. And it's a spittle as well, his mouth. I mean, he's trying to do the emotion thing and the emotion for him is, is spittle. <laughs> but it's so, because we're really close to his face. And his face isn't something you want to get close to generally anyway. And then the spittle no. doesn't really help. Well, yeah, there's a lot of like mucus based type shit that's going to go on. Speaking of which, in this next scene, so we go now to the wife and she's all the way cancered now. Eli's right. She was only halfway cancered before, but now she's all the way scarf on the head cancered. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, BP heart monitor cancer. And look, I don't I don't mean to make light of cancer jokes, but at this point, that's my job, right? Because <laughs> because it's being used in the silliest possible way. Yeah, yeah. Like, when when you made me watch this film, I didn't expect it to be a live version, a live reenactment of the opening montage from Up. So that's basically what we've got here. And then I realised, wait, Up also involves a talking dog. It all makes sense now. Oh. <laughs> Pixar, if you need a lawyer. Yeah, no, I was going to say, they only cut out the part where he was uh, getting distracted by the squirrels because it would have been a copyright infringement or something, yeah. <laughs> that's what was just off screen. It wasn't his lines. It was a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so he's but but of course she's given her little I'm dying monologue, but it's okay because I love God. So she has some like, you know, how awesome is God? I want to point out this is the ninth scene of the movie. Every single one of them has had some reference to church or a crucifix or God. They do not want you to forget that this is a Christian movie for one fucking second. Okay? <laughs> Right, but then we do watch the end of her video, which is just 10 seconds of her wheezing and, and a light bulb shorting out next to her. Yeah. Just cut yeah. that part out. You're making your death video. Do a little bit of editing is all I'm saying. That's just like a lazy death video. Just cut that last part. And a death video, it's it's kind of half-assed when you're this Jesus-y, right? She's like, I'll miss you. But I don't know what I'm talking about. I'll see you again. And I'll, I'll see you again for eternity. So... This is literally like a mic. It's, it's an infinitesimal amount of time. I won't see you. And then we'll be in heaven forever with Jesus. Just, you know, 
Why would I even be sad? It doesn't yeah. Yeah, it make sense for me to have all this. Don't let the grief turn you into an atheist because that'll, that'll go really badly and uh, you'll have to go like have an experience with your friends to sort yourself out. Yeah, no, that would be, <laughs> and that'd make a terrible movie. Yeah. So, okay. So now we cut to, I guess we're going a couple of years in advance. She's dead and Dave has lost his faith in God. Whoa. But he hasn't lost his faith in his hunting show. It's just been on hiatus for two years. So now we cut to him and his buddies about to go out on the big hunting trip to film the pilot for this hunting show, right? Yeah, and, and nothing about this shot suggests that he hasn't been radicalized into a white nationalist militia. Literally nothing. <laughs> Everything about this shot suggests that. And I thought, hang on, is that what he meant by hunting this entire time? Is, 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 is he, are we going to take a really fucking dark turn? <laughs> and to be clear, we need to talk about what everyone in this movie looks like. If Heath is the standard character you get in the video game that is this movie, everyone in this movie is a variation on Heath. It's like, yeah. Heath without the beard, Heath with the beard, beard, yeah, yeah. Heath. It's like one of them already chose Heath and the other one went to choose Heath again and got the variant Heath so that they could uh, tell <laughs> them apart Heath as they play. Face. Well, and, yeah. and one of them did Heath with hair and the other guy was like, I was going to do a Heath with hair. And he's like, I'll do your, you have to do a thinner beard then. No, you right. go, you you pick Heath and hold down the Y button and you'll get a different color belt. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, right. Because, okay, because that's clearly, there is a mirror match going on in this motherfucker because <laughs> two of these motherfuckers, this is going to bother me the entire goddamn movie, look exactly the same. Oh, yeah. Identical. Yeah, yeah that's not helpful at all. And one of them is the main fucking character. <laughs> <laughs> so. But yeah, and and another one, of course, we get the surprise. I just have this character down as surprise Nazi. His character's <laughs> name is Sean, right? But he's constantly just popping out of somewhere going, surprise, skinhead. What? <laughs> <laughs> and here's what's beautiful about this. Spoiler alerts for the movie, but like, yes, early pop scare, oh, it's just my friend is a horror movie trope. But that's because later there's a pop scare with the scary thing from the movie. <laughs> mm, right. Mm. This movie will never do that. No, it, it'll always just be that guy again. <laughs> just that guy <laughs> being breaking a Breaking new ground. They're artists. Yep. And honestly, I felt such a palpable sense of dread watching this part of the film that it felt like it was going to take a right turn into terrorism at any point. And I thought, yes, please let that happen. They turn it to terrorists and then, boom, Dog the Bounty Hunter has to track them down. There's a film. Oh, yes. I'd watch that. <laughs> I'd pay good money to watch that. <laughs> Oh. And this is also where we meet my favorite character in the movie, which is wacky comedy Russell. Yep. Very clearly this hunting party slash church group's funniest friend who is instructed to improvise literally everything he said in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But wackily. Yes, exactly. Oh. Right down to them singing the exposition song. It's like, we're filming a hunting show. Yeehaw! We're singing an expo exposition song. Woohoo! My buddy's wife recently died of cancer. It's just oh. over. <laughs> yeah. And they're, so they're on this road trip to go to their deer hunting thing. And at one point, all I can imagine was if Eli had to be on this road trip. Oh! Because they're just like, all right, what's the record for catching catfish? And then Eli in the back being like, I will murder suicide everyone in this goddamn truck <laughs> if you guys don't stop talking about everything you talk about. I hate oh, you. Every fucking sentence ends in a yeehaw or a get her done. It's so bad. Look, <laughs> there, there is a Patreon amount you can hit, podcast listener, that I will go on a hunting trip with these people. They got nothing going on. <laughs> no, Eli, no. <laughs> they wouldn't pay, the key man insurance wouldn't pay out if you made it that easy on them. <laughs> Would I come back from the trip? No, that's not the point. You hit the Patreon goal, we'll get you that found footage. So you know, so you know listeners, win-win. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Also, by the way, we learned that the title of their YouTube hunting show is Buck Fever Addicts here. Yep. Which could not sound more like a gay porn series. Like those yeah, DVDs no, it could exist. Yes. Oh, well, I'm quite certain that they were excited about this genius spoonerism they made. It's actually f like fuck beaver addicts, but buck fever addicts. Oh, oh yeah. wow. it's a it's a poonerism, actually. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb here, Heath, and say you are way more clever than everyone who made this movie. <laughs> they did not do that by accident. I think they made the movie around that. I think So you know how like I do wordplay and I'm not like, hey, we should make a fucking movie based on this stupid little joke I made just now? 
They do not know how that's a, a good principle. Just good, don't don't do that. <laughs> so yeah, so we should point out. So we're getting like an eleven minute series of shots of them taking a road trip, and it's just all the boring shit that you wish you could fast forward through in a real road trip. But we learn along the way that they're going out to a place they've never been before to hunt for their show, and that place used to be owned by a cult of Satanists. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they're trying to talk about Satan cult stuff, but but they're church crazy hunters. So they're like, oh yeah, they were doing blood sacrifices. Anyways, about our hunting show, shit, that's stupid. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to hang some dead shit upside down and tear off its skin. <laughs> <laughs> but in a, in a way that Jesus would love. Jesus yeah, right. Would be like, fuck that. <laughs> Your hobby. I was very confused throughout much of this road trip monologue as well because they kept talking about hunting whitetail. And I thought that was a fish. There's like a whitetail fish that's about three inches long. And I didn't realize they were talking about deer. So they're going all this way to, to hunt fish. And they're talking about who's, who's going to get the most whitetail. I mean, three inches oh, long. Oh, that would have been amazing if the whole thing was them shooting arrows at three inches long. <laughs> <laughs> and when they added the demon backstory, the Satan, are, they, are these going to be Satanist fish? Are they going to be Satanist tiny little fish? Oh, God, we can't help but film. make better movies as we do these. God damn it. Jumps out of the water, pours a little bit of milk on him. Oh, God, he got me. He got me. <laughs> All right, so so they're driving up to this property when suddenly they come across the fact that Blair Witch Project can't exactly copyright bundle of sticks now, can they? So, <laughs> well, so good. Okay, uh, is that is like a demon henge of sticks? What's going on? <laughs> ah, probably nothing. Anyway, I'm uh, nothing again. We're gonna spread out beyond shouting distance of each other for the rest of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like. I watched this hinge and I was like, you know what? Credit to Blair Witch. There is a wrong way to do this. Because like, it's very <laughs> clearly arts and crafts gone wrong. One of them is kind of Blair Witchy, but a bunch of them are just like bundled together for firewood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, the, so, yeah. So they go by that. They're like, oh, let's remove all of the Satan stuff so we can get through to our spooky cabin. So and then we get Russell, our comic relief character that looks exactly like Dave, our main character doing his comical, <laughs> like, showing us around the cabin bit. Oh, God, good he's for the you, worst. Russell. And this is this here's Bucky the Buck. This is Fishy the Fish. This is TV the TV. Please cut her. I'll kill myself. Clocky the clock. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so great because even the other actors in this scene want nothing to do with it. At one point, he's like, so what's this? And the guy says, it's a television. And it's said with all the, I am sick of your shit. <laughs> Don't that it absolutely deserves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put me on the spot. Television the... God, 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 God damn it. <laughs> so, and of course, they get out of this scene by having Skinhead pop scare his way into the fucking window. <laughs> Again. Yeah, they have this weird fucking bit where he has to like, they're, they're like, oh, can you start a fire? But it's a gas fireplace. Mm hmm. Yeah. So he just turns up the thing and there's a fire. That was so sad. It was supposed to be this like communing with nature moment. And they were like, the God of fire. They literally say that. The God of fire will now start a fire. And he's just like, <laughs> <laughs> and they turn all the lights off to make it really dramatic as well while he while he just slowly adjusts the dial. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but of course he says, you know, and behold, some kind of God reference. So now we are 11 scenes in a row. There has been a God <laughs> reference of some fucking sort. So now one of them goes outside. I, I never figured out which one of this is to take some video of the cabin for the show, right? To get some B-roll. Some B-roll. <laughs> And all they're doing here is getting an establishing shot of the house that we already saw that they're in. Mm -hmm. And they do multiple takes of getting that. He like moves the camera down to the house and he's like, no, no, cut, cut. Let me do that again. Let me move a little <laughs> bit downer. I, I feel like I was that was down into the left. I think I needed more, a little more straight down. People aren't going to know where they are. It would only have been better if he was uh, like humming a Seinfeld slap bass at the same time as well. <laughs> <laughs> You just show Tom's restaurant for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then so he like looks over because he hears a sound or something. First of all, none of these people have apparently ever been in the woods at night in their goddamn lives. You always hear a fucking sound. There's <laughs> It's the woods. It's you know? nonstop sounds and har way more scary sounds than that ever make it into this movie. It's always yeah. just like a deer raping a goat 
through a fire. Right? <laughs> but there a branch cracks and he's like, that's never fucking happened in these. Yeah, before. exactly. <laughs> I need a helicopter out of here. <laughs> Is there matter and air around here? What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, man. Like everywhere. But so he looks over there and when he looks back, there's someone standing right in front of him all creepily. Now, they're expecting a fourth guy. Yes. They said in the fucking trip that the other guy couldn't get off of work as early as them. So he knows another guy's coming. But they play this like a horror movie. He's like, hey, man, who are you? Because he can only see a silhouette. Like, I don't know, but I'm approximately the size and weight of the guy you're expecting. <laughs> <laughs> and then he cracks a road flare and starts to like come towards him and he's like ah I'm just kidding it's just me and at no point does this movie go hey did you uh get out and crack a road flare just to scarily say hi to me you know that we're all armed right this is a hunting trip why are they all trying to pop scare each other <laughs> this this is what happens when you don't let men hug. They greet each other via pop scare and road flares. If they had just slowly killed themselves one by one because of pop scares and then gunshots. 100%. 100%. And with this, it's like, oh yeah, well, uh, thanks for saying hi. What a what a valuable use of our only flair. I can't imagine yeah, a situation right. where that'll come in useful later in the film when we don't have one. No, nah, no, I brought an extra one as this prank. Too. We we even watch him put the flare and he's like, what do we do with that flare now? You little fire that you're holding. And he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mush it into the ground. I'm going to stub it out in this pile of dry leaves. It's fun. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Fun. I can't see how that could go wrong. Don't worry. I'm, I'm going to use it later for a gender reveal in a California redwood. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then we cut to marshmallow cooking and bullshit buddy stories and we get this, I, I get, because they're clearly they're just going for a silly, funny story that their buddy has, but it's the most terrible, horrible, it keeps <laughs> getting worse. It starts with a naked child chained to a pipe, and it gets worse. Okay, that's not, no, it didn't exist. No! Just now. The story is like, so I got this kid handcuffed to some playground equipment, and I take out my hose, obviously. <laughs> yes! No, I'm yes. done. That was my story. I, that was what and his friend yes. takes issue with the story by saying, hey, you can't hose down naked boys in your backyard. And I thought, I can't tell which bit of the sentence you're taking issue with there. Like, are you allowed to hose down clothes, boys? Or can you only do naked boys in your front yard? Like, which bit are you criticizing? <laughs> But that's literally the story they came up with. So he's like, the the idea is he was there. He was like the counselor at youth camp or something. He catches some kid who got dared to run across something naked. And while the kid's naked, he takes him to his house, chains him to a pipe, hoses him down and leaves him out in the cold overnight so he can learn his lesson. That's literally the story that the man tells. Like, this is definitely something from a radicalization camp, right? This is something ISIS does. This is something that yeah. all militias are doing as like a, a, a way of toughening <laughs> and, and indoctrinating people in. This is what's happening. Yeah, this would be an investigation in the Marines. They'd be like, all right, <laughs> man, relax, okay? We want Navy SEALs. You're damn right I ordered the code red of the kid with the, <laughs> the play radical. <laughs> Well, yeah. So I thought to myself at this point, like, unless this movie is about that kid hunting these people with a straight razor from here on out, there's no fucking reason for that to be the goddamn story. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. We're done with that story, right? Like, like he's just trying to make the, you know, sometimes you just got to torture naked children point. Yep. And they also turn in their cell phones here because horror movies don't work with cell phones. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's a smart move. There was a period of time when horror movies were completely fucked. And then Apple came along and saved the day with its three hour battery life on an iPhone. And all horror movie <laughs> writers could, uh, could breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> oh, thank God. All right. Well, it looks like this movie is about to settle on a genre, at least. So, with that assurance, I think we can take time for another break. But we're back in a flash with even more Hunter's Creed. Hey, welcome to Typical Clothing Store. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, I'm just here for like some t-shirts. Oh, well, you're a tall, skinny guy. Uh, I suppose so, yeah. Okay, well, uh, can I interest you in this? Is, is that a crop top? Nope, it is the only shirt we make for guys your size. But it's nowhere near long enough. I'm going to look ridiculous. Do you, have you got anything that'll actually fit me? No, we don't. Uh, but, but Cuts Clothing does. What's Cuts Clothing? 
They've taken a classic men's fashion staple, the plain tee, and refined it, combining premium quality with a minimalistic aesthetic. Each piece of clothing is designed with custom engineered fabric, expertly graded for the perfect fit, arming you for every challenge and opportunity. The end result, what GQ magazine calls the only shirt worth wearing. Wow. Well, that certainly sounds good. It is. It's not just a lifestyle. It's not just clothing. It's office leisure apparel for the sport of business. Get 15% off of your first order by going to cutsclothing.com slash gam. That's cutsclothing.com slash gam for 15% off the only shirt worth wearing. Wow. All right. For the sport of business, you say. Well, um, yeah, thanks, I guess. Wait, wait, before you go, uh, we do have this T-shirt. This is long enough for you. Oh, you do? Yeah, it's a quadruple XL, and it only comes in bloodstained. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, everyone. Welcome to the first ever riders meeting for Hunter's Creed. Hell yeah. Let's ride now. I reckon. Praise the Lord. All right. So as y'all are well aware, we had a bit of a miscommunication. Uh, so Steve made a movie about his wife dying of cancer and his struggle with faith. Hey, bless her heart. Yeah. Uh, Tim made a comedy buck hunting show. <laughs> I wear funny hats in it. Mm -hmm. I, have funny ha I have a bunch of funny hats. Yep, and Greg won 11 minutes of Dog the Bounty Hunter's time in that personal injury lawsuit, which he has supplemented with footage from his camera doorbell. Worth every penny. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't we just smash all this shit together and put it on Amazon Prime? All right, sounds good to me. Hell yeah. I fell on Dog the Bounty Hunter's steps, you know. We know, man, you told us. Mm -hmm. Hey, podcast listener. You know, there's been a lot of talk about sacrifice in the news lately. From grocery store workers to nurses and doctors, there are countless people to thank for the barest hints of normalcy that we get to enjoy. But have you thought about podcasters? That's right, podcasters. We're on the front lines of terrible cinema so that you don't have to be. And there's no better example of our sacrifice than this month's patron-only bonus episode, <sighs> Loquisha. <laughs> this 2019 film written, directed, and produced by as well as starring the same mediocre white guy is about a white dude who uses a black lady voice to give out advice and spoiler alert he never learns not to do that no he does not and if you'd like to make sure that our suffering wasn't for nothing why not sign up to support the show over at patreon.com slash godawful you'll get access to our review of Laquisha as soon as it comes out as well as 55 other bonus episodes, including Wonder Woman 84, Batman vs. Superman, and even some bad movies that weren't made by Zack Snyder. Sign up to support us at higher levels, and we'll send you your very own Christian movie bingo card, designed by friend of the show Angelo Madrid, so you can play along at home. Plus, you'll be helping to support the show and Eli's, at this point, very expensive prank website habit. Patreon.com slash godawful, because some heroes just watch Loquisha. <laughs> All right, you guys ready for the ads? Yeah, ready to yeah, go. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. oh and, and Marsh, I wanted to thank you again for the article that you wrote about podcast ads and the and the skeptic this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super nice shout out. Thanks. Yeah, no worries. I mean, you know, it's I think we just need to be re really careful about what we advocate for, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. Mm -hmm. I mean, Absolutely. like what seems like a casual ad read to us can reinforce some super harmful beliefs. You never know. You can never be too careful. Exactly. All right, uh, Eli, so uh, whenever you're ready, bro. Yeah, yeah, okay. <clears throat> Bleh. Bleh. Hey, 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 it's okay, buddy. Oh, hey, guys, what's the matter? Yeah, it's it's Eli. He's got cancer. Yep, I sure do. Oh, um, well, why don't you try Dick York, the only CBD-infused cereal guaranteed to cure your cancer with your born... Oh, sorry, what? Yeah, it's a new sponsor. New Marsh, sponsor. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah but like, are they claiming? What sorry, are they claiming? I'm sorry, Marsh. I got like an afternoon thing with the wife. If you don't, yeah, if you don't mind, just like do the thing. Right, fine, okay. Just fill out the maze in the back of our box, and one of our telemedicine doctors will have already prescribed you enough off-brand Viagra and CBD infused cereal to send all the cancer in your body shooting out of the, t the tip of your dick in no time. Okay, now that that cannot be scientific. Marsh, the copy. Read the copy. Yeah, Mark, we still got to do the movie. <sighs> and and best of all, it's completely GMO free. You're saying not a single gene of the organisms used to make this cereal have been modified in any way. That's right, Heath. Not a single one. What would that even mean if it were true? No idea. Get 10% off your first box by going to our website and using the code MARSHDEEPLYBELIEVES in this product today. Why is that the code? 
Hey, we, we don't pick the codes, Mars. Yes, yeah, based on the show. <sighs> Dick yolk, I personally guarantee it will cure your cancer or you can tickle my feet until I puke. Excellent. Great read. Right. Do we have any interstitial breaks this week that aren't direct attacks on me? Mm, I think we have one. Maybe. Not direct. Yeah. Great. Perfect. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up on what I'm sure they thought was that hilarious bit that their buddy Russell does about showing off his new bow. (laughs) This guy bought and packed fake teeth just for this bit. Yep. So stupid. Hey, can I just say this? Little comedian to comedian, Russell. If you're making a bow hunting show, hillbilly teeth off limits. They're not going to like it. That is your target audience (laughs) is not going to enjoy hillbilly teeth. God, he goes into detail on this. And at one point I thought, is this is this an infomercial for the ball? Because I don't trust right. you guys after that Eric Metaxas stuff with my pillow <laughs> infomercial in the middle of it. Well, and this is, by the way, the first time I realized that this movie was not just about hunting, but about bow hunting, which is, you know, <laughs> like hunting with a rifle, but with extra wanton cruelty. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so much worse. Well, a way easier way for it to go wrong. And Worse then, than already bad. Right. And they can't help but cock worship this bow, man. I mean, it's it's a 10 minute long scene. So much of America would be better off if they could just like unveil a big black dildo and lap back and forth on it happily yeah. for 20 to 30 minutes. And again, it's supposed to be like, you know, the communing with nature thing. And this guy's like, you know, just like the ancient hunter gatherers. I present this carbon fiber yeah, compound. Right. Oh, oh. It's so complicated. There's so many like cogs and wheels and strings and whistles on it. It's insane. It looks like something Batman would pull out. Yeah. I just wanted to cut over to a deer flying a predator drone into this house and <laughs> with a missile somehow. All right. That's on. That's good. That's fair. That's fair. How many points am I? <laughs> All right, so they take their bows out. and They're going to go do some fucking target practice, I guess. But along the way, they're going to talk about the myth that the Columbine shooters targeted Christians for some reason. <laughs> okay, but why would the book be called She Said Yes if, unless her mom was clinging to religion as a way to deal with the fact that her daughter was killed in a senseless mass shooting? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck was yes. this doing in the movie? <laughs> It was so weird. And Dave at this point is the the no good atheist. I think that's what it was there for to establish yeah. Dave as the atheist. Oh, sort of, right. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Trying to do the, the rational thing. But he's meant to be wrong. And the person we're meant to think is right is his friend who calls it the library that she got shot in. Yeah, no, he <laughs> she was shot in the library and you can trust it. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. That, that sets up Dave's but prayer is bullshit moment and everybody gasps or whatever. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then they show up to their target shooting thing where they're shooting the fake practice deer with their bow and arrows. And I'm like, that's fine. Yeah. You know, if you guys want to go out to a cabin and do that for an evening, you know, that's that looks like fun. Do it. Yeah, it looks fine. I mean, I, I wrote that Disney Plus's Hawkeye spinoff is pretty disappointing. But <laughs> on the plus side, there's no Jeremy Renner. So, you know, I'll take it. I'll take right. it. <laughs> and they spend so long in this scene setting up, oh, Dave's still a crack shot. It will never pay. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no. It's so frustrating. His skills never come up again apart from now. And they make out like, oh, yeah, he was so good. We used to call him Shooter, which is a confusing nickname for a group of hunters. Call him Archer. You probably get a, a, another <laughs> friend who's good with a gun. What are you going to call him? You've blown your load there. Think about it. <laughs> so, and I got so bored with this scene because he's like, he's, try- he's trying to shoot something that's like super far away and everything. And I'm like, is that even very far away for an archer? And I learned that the world archery record for an accurate shot under world archery conditions, or like whatever the fucking league is, is 283.47 meters. And it was set by a guy who did not have arms. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, Robin Hood did not have arms. Fun, Fun fact. Fact. <laughs> All right. <laughs> by the way, if you ever want to feel better about your body, go ahead and look up world archery champions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can bring your rascal out there, man. Go for it. <laughs> so, oh, God, that joke works so much better if I don't set it up with the guy with no arms bit. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. yeah, that's, really, that's, <laughs> that's that really not what Eli's it. talking about. <laughs> All right, so then we get Dave. It, it's early in the morning, and Dave's going to tell us boring hunter shit. 
it goes on for so like where he talks about how he masks his sweat smell oh. and shit. Jeez, just shut up. God, you make me watch a boring <laughs> film in which a man talks about how much he sweats. Fuck me. And I must be like, <laughs> I, I could not be less interested in hunting. And here, here's the weird thing about like the uh, cross-cultural kind of thing going on. Like hunting in the US is, is kind of a common man's kind of thing. It's like an everyday kind of guy, a redneck kind of guy. It's all that kind of stuff. In the UK, it just isn't that. Hunting in the UK is pretty much exclusively a very posh sport. Right. Right down to the fact that, a, a fun fact, the government, when giving the exe- listing the few exemptions to COVID laws around how many people can gather in one place, one of those exemptions were for hunting parties for the Boxing Day hunt, where a lot of toffs get on, bo- on, on the back of horses and chase a fox with like 18 dogs together. That was allowed because you can't piss off the hunters because they own the country, basically. Right. So wow. we do not have a, an affinity for hunting <laughs> and hunters here in the UK generally. Sincerely held killing foxes. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, listen, PETA, if you're listening, and I know you are, Make American hunters dress the way British hunters voluntarily dress, and you will kill the sport of hunting overnight. Yeah. And and force the British hunters to dress the way the American ones do. I think you can get on both sides of the pond. Exactly. Everybody wins. You know? Yeah, that is perfect. That is absolutely perfect. You guys have to look like a chess bishop, and you have to look like you're trying to use camo to hide from your child support payments. Everybody go. Come on. <laughs> rules are rules. Okay, question about how they think camo works. So... Dave is sweaty, right? He's a sweaty guy. So he says, I'm not wearing my full camo yet because the deer can smell sweat, but he's covered in camo. He's wearing camo all over his body. Mm. Like, do they think you need extra layers of camo to make it really work? What does that mean? Maybe the camo's just so good he can't see it. And so he doesn't know he's wearing it. Yet. <laughs> oh, I have put it on shit. I mean, <laughs> oh, that's some good camo right there. Oh, my legs! Oh, no, I thought it's okay. it was just foliage, but no, it turns out. Oh, no, no, you know what? It's for deers that have very weak x ray vision, you know? So, oh, no, I still can't see them at all. Yeah. <laughs> They have one layer x-ray. Thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, and then they stop and have a, a quick prayer because I stopped counting the scenes at this point, but I think we're at something like 16. And then they all set out to their different deer blinds. Now, the way this is set up, they have one deer blind that's to the north, one to the east, one to the west, one to the south, and each of them are going to swap out each day. So they're going to go together to this cabin and then spend all day sitting up in trees by themselves. <laughs> that's the sport. Yep. <laughs> Bonding for the straight American male, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and there's just, there's so many weird things about this. I mean, first of all, the fact that they're praying is weird. How it's like, dear God, please let us murder lots of your creations today. Okay, thanks. <laughs> it's such a weird thing to be doing. And then as Dave walks away, one of his mates says, uh, hey, Dave, ain't nothing in Nosewood you can't kill with that bull. So, um, thanks, I guess. I mean, I was, I was only going for deer, but oh, thanks for the vote of confidence. <laughs> permission. What the fuck would be in those woods that you couldn't kill with the bow? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to yeah. kill some fucking trees, too, while we're doing it. Unless it was permission, because the only other things in those woods are his three friends. So I, I don't know whether his mate was like, look, we, we've all got sick of this bald guy doing the pop scares, man. We know <laughs> no these pop court in the scares. land would convict you. <laughs> Listen, I eat the whole tree. I'm not an asshole. I'm like a Native American. I eat the whole tree. <laughs> If you see a metal bear, run. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then I write in my notes. So then we follow Russ, Dave, no fucking clue. It turns out to be Dave eventually. But it's it's apparently it's like before sunrise. It's early, early in the morning. And he's going out to find his deer blind. And wouldn't you know it? He sees a creepy light in the distance. <sighs> The thing is, right, I cannot think of a single thing that would get me into the woods before dawn. And, you know, and I'll go to some pretty crazy places. I spent three days voluntarily in a hotel full of flat earthers. So I will I will put myself <laughs> into the top, but nothing is getting me in the woods before dawn. It's amazing to me how many hobbies involve people waking up at 5 a.m. That should be the <laughs> like the first step of your hobby should be, do I have to wake up at 5 a.m.? Yes? Well, then it's not a hobby. It's a punishment. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's why there's no QED this year. No. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so he sees this creepy light. It's a candle, right? But it's, you know, candling creepily. It's, it's a scary candle. Well, what's so amazing about this is this is where they're trying to get the, like, Blair Witch shaky camera, but it's combined with 
the toxic masculinity of I ain't no pussy. So he's just like, <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a candle. Fuck you, candle. Fuck you. Fuck. fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, we're being led to believe that there's like some sort of demonic presence in this forest, right? So like a demon is just really slow playing it and being like, uh, I'm just going to do one candle. I'm going to do one <laughs> candle standing up. It's going to be really subtle. Yeah, yeah, just setting the mood. You know, it's, you've got to light yeah. the candles first. You know, next scene, they're going to put a bit of Sade on in the background. Just really get into the mood. <laughs> See, I thought that the candle was doing the tactic my wife does when she buys too much shit at Bed Bath & Beyond, just starts lighting all the candles and that. Okay, what did you get? What <laughs> sale did they have that you're now trying to dispose of all the candles we own so you can replace them? <laughs> what? I love our living room to smell like a forest and our bathroom to smell like peaches and cream and... The other side of our bathroom to smell like a different forest. <laughs> you don't, don't fucking judge me. Don't judge Who me. Who doesn't love those things? <laughs> Seriously, that sounds delightful. <laughs> Better than what my bathroom smells like. <laughs> yeah, I'm team Anna on that 100%. <laughs> Hashtag Candlegate, everybody. Candlegate. <laughs> All right, so now we cut to like it's full day out and he's going to sit in a tree and wait for a deer because at the 35 minute mark at the title of this goddamn movie could have just been killing time the movie <laughs> right yeah and what i love of this he's he's up there in the tree but he's talking to himself about snacks and he's an atheist like he seriously needs to sue this guy for copyright for each <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the scene is so boring. He talks about his snacking habits. He talks about how his favorite part of hunting is how he gets to sit outdoors in the woods. And I was like, does someone want to break to this guy that you're allowed to appreciate the woods without murdering things? Yeah. <laughs> I go outside at five in the morning to do that sometime. Just sitting there in the museum. Fuck, I love these paintings. I should kill something quick. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. He sees a deer at this point as well, and he talks about how you know the deer is amazing, like how amazing that is. And like he's right, deer are pretty cool. Like I met some deer in Japan when I was in Nara, where the big deer would bow to you when they met people because they saw people bow to each other, and when the when they saw that, what? they thought of, you know they'd start nice. mimicking the bow because then people would feed them, and they taught themselves to bow. It was amazing. That's the most adorable thing I've ever heard. Yeah, they what? were, they were a delight. They were an absolute delight. And I didn't try and kill them for sport because I'm not a fucking psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> so bow, boom, down. <laughs> Marsh bows and kicks him in the face. Ah, oh, I thought we did a oh. karate start. I thought it was a start of karate. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> all right. So, but yeah, so then he sits in a tree all day and does absolutely nothing, right? And so now he's leaving. <laughs> he's going back to the cabin. Well, he does nothing except tell us about his candy strategy, which yes. I, I actually love this part. <laughs> this guy clearly is like, you know, it'd be a great 10 minute segment of this video we're making. Me explaining how I pre unwrap a bunch of candy and put it loose in a little paper towel so I can avoid making noise when I'm hunting deer. He says out loud while he's out in the woods <laughs> hunting deer. <laughs> he also says he didn't get anything. He goes, not a bad day one. That's. That it must be a bad day one. What, it has what is to be. a bad day one? Nothing, it's not. <laughs> yeah, right. No deer shot happened. me. Yeah, no, no candy. It's no candy. You, you left the candy at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so he's walking back. He, he didn't get any deer today, but that's fine. And of course, fucking Johnny Jump Scare shows up behind him again. <laughs> Put shit in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that? <laughs> Again, because every interaction has to be juvenile bullshit. The guy says, hey, man, when I was out taking a shit, I didn't have any toilet paper. And then rubs mud in his face. And he goes, dude, was that poop? <laughs> like, wait, you you literally think your buddy was walking around with a handful of shit so he could smear some on your face? What? <laughs> <laughs> I like to unwrap my shit and put it in a paper towel. <laughs> <laughs> So don't make any noise. Whether or not it's poop, this movie is firmly ensconced my next prank on Marsh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want you to, to define right now ensconced. I bet you one American dollar you cannot accurately define ensconced. <laughs> That's 72 English pence. Candle. He doesn't have holder. an American dollar, Eli. Don't think it's a sucker. Yeah, spot. yeah, yeah. You don't have an American dollar. <laughs> exactly. Vaccine stealer. All right. But now one of their friends came back with dead rabbits. This is Paul. He's the fourth friend that showed up. He's got dead rabbits. So now we're going to have the big, hilarious breakfast cooking skit. Okay. I have a very important thing about this breakfast cooking skit. Do you? I do. 
He's like, here's your grits and the apples. Here's the yum and no sin sausage and the sin free bacon. Shit, shouldn't have put those two bits together. But then <laughs> he just pulls out milk and he goes, Mary's milk. Mm. Is the joke that that is the breast milk of the Virgin Mary? <laughs> I think that's what it is. A gallon of it? Um, <laughs> I'm no prude, but I feel like of all the people that wouldn't be super into talking about Mary's breast milk, it would be Christians, right? Why was he doing Why would it be sin-free sausage and a holy ham to begin with? Yeah, the only thing I could think of was I was having delayed side effects from my COVID vaccine. That was the only <laughs> thing I could use to rationalize this. So, oh, and we forgot to mention because it's so unmentionably boring that while Dave was sitting around in the tree, he heard a creepy sound at one point. Right. So as they're all sitting down to eat, Dave says, hey, man, well, while you guys were out in the woods, did any of you guys hear something that might have advance the goddamn plot at all <laughs> <laughs> nope nope nothing didn't hear nothing and by the way the noise he heard was like uh -uh. like it wasn't even a scary or demon-esque noise they no. couldn't be bothered no it was like normal forest noise mm. that's it <laughs> more or less yeah but this is where sean decides the the pop scare guy decides that he's gonna go hard on his evangelism so he explains, well, I'm not surprised that you're hearing demons haunting you in the woods because you don't love God anymore, motherfucker. How about that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his, his line is, if you hang around the darkness long enough, you're bound to make some dark friends. It's like, yeah, but before we love Jesus, his friend was Dog the Bounty Hunter. So I think he's traded <laughs> up. <here. laughs> right? And obviously Dave gets mad here and he's like, Oh, yeah. You want to talk about religion? Let's talk about my dead wife and the problem of evil and cancer. And then Sean, the Nazi pop scare guy is like, oh, yeah, no, that's perfect. Let's talk about her. Do you ever want to see her again? <laughs> <laughs> so fucked up. That guy is supposed to be the good guy. So and Dave, like, understandably leaps up to attack him. Mm. But because he's really big and Dave's really small, he like lets them. I know I've been here, right? Where you let the guys oh, hold, you're hold you're me lucky, back. Ru I mean it. Hold me back. Hold me back. <laughs> you're, lucky, you're lucky Russell's holding me back with this potato salad fork. Because otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Russell, get the fucking fork, man. All, all this bald guy does is pop scares and then preach your judgment. And I thought, you know, I hope he dies first. And I mean the actor, not the character. I hope the actor <laughs> dies. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, that's what I said. Like, if that character doesn't like trip and fall, into a wood chipper at some point this movie is completely wasted why make <laughs> such a terrible bad guy and then not pull the trigger mm -mm. literally because they think he's the good guy because he's the one trying to get him back to Jesus I know it's so bizarre to me that they don't realize that all of these characters need to die by the end <laughs> Jesus all right and then we have the bit where like so Dave wanders off to be all sad and 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 plot Sean's murder I mean, they're all out there hunting. It seems like you can get away with it. He takes the camera with him, though, because bear in mind, this is all meant to be found footage. So he right, does right. set the camera up before he goes for a sulk. Like, he really gets the <laughs> shot right. Like, I've got to have the right sort of shot depth. But just behind this bucket of water, that's when I'll do me plotting to, to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then, and then his buddy Paul shows up. Now, Paul's the one who killed the rabbits that they just got done eating. So now he's going to wash the blood off of his hands from cleaning the rabbits. Yes. After he got done eating, he decides to wash the blood off of his hands from killing the rabbits. It's, mm -hmm. it's so weird. It's right up next to the camera and he does it for so long. And I swear, as he washes his hands, they get bloodier. I think he's washing blood <laughs> onto his hand. I think that's their <laughs> blood bucket. Yeah. I don't think okay. All right. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. And in the end, he just gives up and starts wiping them on a bloody rag in exactly the same way that guys like give up drying the hands under the hand dryer when it's a bit shit and just rub it on your jeans instead. It's that yeah, exactly right. the same that's thing. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and they have this, like, this never comes up again. They just want to make sure that they didn't get all the way through the movie without shitting on mental health services. So the guy's like, hey, are you still taking that uh, medicine that your therapist put you on? He's like, nope. And he's like, oh, good. That's good. That's a good idea, this movie. Yep, and that's all we're going to say about that. Hey, mm -hmm. you know what? That reminds me of transition to the satanic cult plot point. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of things that we make up in our brains that are part of our mental illness that's shared by a religious delusion. <laughs> cults, huh? Satanic cults and how widespread and real they are. And, and they, they ask him, like, oh, do you think that's all, all like, is that true? And he says, yeah, no, that, yeah, that, that lady who was, uh, who was saying it, she seemed pretty weird to me, says the guy who's still blood on his hands, casually wiping his knife on a dirty <laughs> rag. <laughs> You're not the best judge here, mate. So... 
All right, so now we we cut to it's that night again. They're all sitting around the campfire where Russ shared his torturing the wet kid story. <laughs> and we get another wet kid story. Goes, this is the wet kid story fire. Yeah. He starts out, so I found a kid at the bottom of a pool, and everybody's like, God damn it, you're not invited anymore. You're not, you're not, you, keep, you, you don't know how to do the campfire story thing. It's like, yeah, we asked you what you got up to over summer. I thought you'd say like a vacation, not fucking found a dead kid. <laughs> and the, the thing is, this this kid who's at the bottom of the pool, he explains in this story that the kid was like hijinks around the pool, and I thought he was there and let him go. And I just thought, yeah, what you should have done, right? You strip that kid, you handcuff him to a pole, and you hose him down. We've heard this lesson before. This is the moral of the story. You know, listeners, if you're ever worried that some kids are up to some ill-advised hijinks, take it from God Awful Movies. Strip, handcuff, hose them. Damn right. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. So Eli, stop buying stripped-down kids and hose them down, chain to the backyard. And he's got dogs. such good pricing these days. Oh, already exists. Too late. Yeah. <laughs> The kid's not even dead. He tells a story. The kid isn't even dead. He goes out three minutes into, I found a kid at the bottom of the swimming pool. Three minutes he lets that story go on before saying, anyway, the kid was fine in the end. It's like, you are yeah. fucking <laughs> asshole. Dude, could you improvise a cooking show instead or something? You're doing this all wrong. And at the end of it, preachy guy even asks him, so before you finish, what was the lesson? And again, the lesson, your three-step solution to juvenile delinquency, strip, handcuff, hose. He delivers the lesson straight down the barrel of the camera like it's the end of fucking He-Man or something. It's amazing. <laughs> so yeah, he goes, he goes, the lesson is that God must have liked that kid more than Dave's wife, right? Am I right? Is that huh? not... But then Dave leaves. He's like, I don't want to hear about people who lived. But I don't know. I'm, but yeah, he, he wanders off. But then we cut to late that night again. Problem with found footage movies. So he wakes up and he sees some weird lights in the background. So he immediately turns the camera on and walks out. Right. <laughs> so but he, he goes out to where the bonfire was, where the guys had been telling their stories and shit. And damn it, if there's not a scary candle in it. Ooh, that's the second candle. <laughs> Six more and he'll be haunted by a Hanukkah. <laughs> Demon just standing off in a clearing. All right, I'm nailing this. This is too. He's too. I'm really building this. this is great. <laughs> and then, so th this is also where we meet uh, the first time Dave's scared sounds. <laughs> Right, he starts trying to do the I'm for yeah, it sounds like I don't it sounds like Cookie Monster almost at an <laughs> orgasm. It sounds like me and Heath climbing a stair. <laughs> for not to do that. <laughs> and yeah, so he he gets all terrified. He runs back inside. He's scared of a candle. Well, it's a candle and then it's like three loud bangs and then this weird scream and I'm pretty sure the weird scream is Dog the Bounty Hunter remembering he's been in this film already. Like, no! <laughs> <laughs> what was I thinking? I should have turned it down. <laughs> so, so yeah, so he runs back inside and funny guy's there. He's like, hey man, you know, you, you want to have a scene? And he's like, yeah, we might as well have a scene now since we're both awake. And instead of saying... Hey, man, I've been seeing some creepy shit and there was a candle out there. So clearly there's somebody running around putting candles out and there was a weird sound. We should go check it out. It sounded like somebody screamed and could be in some serious danger. He just goes, all right, man, well, I'm 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 kind of freaked out. So I'm going to go to bed tonight now. <laughs> oh, OK. And that's that's the end of the scene, except we get one little shot of Russell being like, all right, go to bed. And then he takes a big bite of cereal yes. all sloppy. <laughs> I couldn't I stop it. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so was he already up eating cereal when Dave went out to the porch light? Or did he hear yeah. Dave getting panicked and thought, I'm going to eat some cereal for this? See, that's the shot I wanted is Russell sitting in the dark again because Dave turns on the light. Yeah, yeah. Eating cereal being like, I don't think my story about the drowned kid had the punch that I wanted it to. I gotta, <laughs> should have led with a funnier story. <laughs> Stupid Russell. <laughs> and then this is where they start cutting in the B-roll of like their fucking ring doorbell seeing a <laughs> deer outside there. Well, it's not the first time they do it. Yeah, we haven't mentioned it up till now, but yeah. But what's great is I get what they're going for here, right? They're trying to do paranormal activity, right? That mm. use the like, oh, look, here's our security camera footage of the demon doing a thing. But the demon never does a thing in their footage. Right. Yeah. It's just a deer like <laughs> munching on some grass. And then there's a noise and the deer's like, well, 
What was that? Nothing? Okay. Oh, my <laughs> it's like they forgot to CGI in the spooky stuff. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come to it in post. Don't worry, we'll come to it in post. Oh, we'll add something in post. Dog said he'd add something in post. He said, Cut, cut, cut. Dear, do something spooky for the B roll. Spooky. And action. I love, too, that they actually get the deer, like, hearing a creepy sound or whatever, but the deer, like, lives in the woods, so it just <laughs> looks over there like, yeah, it's probably nothing, and goes back to eat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's the woods. I'm a deer. Yeah, that's, that's just Brian. He does that every night. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Go, go back to sleep, Brian. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. It turns out that's what's going to pass for something happening in this movie, so we're going to call that break time, but first let me get back to the hard sell here. Will we learn to tell Dave and Russ apart in time? Why didn't they give one of them a distinctive hat or an eye patch or something? Will it ever even matter if we know the comic relief from the dramatic lead? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the ridiculous conclusion of Hunter's Creed. Move your elbow. This Move is it. my it's my joke elbow. Please don't have a joke elbow. That's not a thing. I need it. Oh, hey guys, what's up? Oh, hey Marsh. Uh, Eli spent most of our money on website pranks again, so we were saving money by, you know, just all using this one mic, and it's got a little tight. There's a third chair. You don't have to sit on my lap. Just use I the third chair. I get nervous. I get nervous. Well, if you're not going to save money, why don't you guys try Mint Mobile? What's Mint Mobile? Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless services online only, Mint Mobile lets you maximize your savings with plans starting at just $15 a month. Wow. Just $15 a month? Yeah, that's right. All plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Yeah, I actually switched to Mint when they started sponsoring our show, and I'm never going back. I saved a ton. Okay, but do I have to get like a Heath phone or a number that starts with an umlaut? No, no, you use your own phone with any Mint mobile plan, and you keep the same phone number along with all your existing contacts. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven-day money-back guarantee. So switch to Mint Mobile, get premium wireless service, and starting at just 15 bucks per month. All right, Marsh, that sounds good. How do we sign up? To get a new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and to get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bills to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. All right, Marsh, we're in. Or, you know, you could just stop buying prank websites about me. Yeah, probably going to do the mint thing. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. I didn't steal the vaccine. Mm-hmm. Didn't you? Uh, maybe you guys could distract him with a different hobby or something. I don't know what to tell you, man. Like, he, he tried chess for a couple of weeks. Yeah, and? He's bad at thinking. Yeah, that's fair. Hey, guys, guys, we're back. Dinner is served. Yeah, ding, ding. Let's eat. Oh, nice. Dinner. Marsh, are you hungry? Uh, that's an unconscious man. <laughs> he's not a man, Marsh. He's an Instacart shopper, and his name was Phil. And he's not unconscious. That's a weird way to say it. We murdered him. Yeah, with a razor ball. What? Why would you do that? Oh, well, we need to eat, dude. Yeah, do you want us to starve? Right, sure, but like, surely there's got to be a better way for you to eat than the cruel murder of innocent people. Uh, nope, turns out there's nope, not. Literally no. none. And you asking us to think of one is racist. Racist, yes. Thank what? you. Yes. How is that racist? Well, uh, ancient people had to kill Instacart shoppers, March. And those people, the ancient ones, they, they aren't white. Ergo, you asking us not to murder people mm -hmm. is racist. Racist. Right. Like, first of all, ancient people didn't have razor balls. And secondly, I'm pretty sure you aren't starving. You're just killing Instacart shoppers for fun. How dare you? We honor these Instacart shoppers. We eat everything, Marsh, even if they brought broccoli. Yeah. Yeah. I've got literally no idea why you think that makes killing something okay. Plus, plus, if we don't kill them with razor balls, the population of Instacart shoppers was going to just spiral out of control. That's true. Ah, they're everywhere. Yeah, like triples. But like, even if that was true, surely the solution isn't for Eli and Heath to kill them with razor balls. You want us to starve then? My dad's bookstore went out of business. You would, you would have an like iPhone. So I don't know where starvation. you get off talking about this. Are you guys just saying things now? Or were those meant to be related to what I said? Come on, guys. It's obvious that Marsh can't understand us from his high horse of not murdering something for a hobby. Yeah. Racist also. Snob. Racist. Ah, oh, oh, I fell on my razor ball. 
Oh my God, what a terrible accident. There was no way to prevent it, though. Mental health services. <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the gang on the following morning, setting out once again to sit in fucking trees all day. Oh, my God. At a certain point, this has to become Koyana Skatsi, right? Like Koyana <laughs> Skatsi gets to sue them. <laughs> I have a question about hunting. Mm -hmm. you, well, you're asking the right people. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I, maybe, you know, I don't know. So first of all, they talk about the hunting blinds they're using. Mm -hmm. I assume that means... You're like covered by something so deer can't see you there, right? No. No. No, a deer blind is a, like it's a place that you set up in a tree that you can climb high up in so they can't see because the deer aren't looking up in a tree for shit. Yeah, it's called a blind because treehouse is undignified for the <laughs> Well, and, okay. because very often there's no structure at all. It's like like the thing that he's got here where it's just a pipe you're sitting on that you're kind of tied to. Yeah. So it's not really a blind. It's just to be somewhere they don't they don't typically look. That's not yeah. the same as mm -hmm. being hidden. <laughs> Thank you. That's not what that word means. But <laughs> he's also not, was he up in the air? I thought he was just like standing on the ground with a, a tied to a rope to the tree. So he's just like kind of dangly, but he's <laughs> standing there. It didn't make any sense to me. No, no, he's pretty high up because he falls. Yeah. No, I I think so. Here's what was fucking you up. I think is that yes. That's what he was doing. He was uh, he was inches off the ground. They were trying to make it look like he was high up in a tree, but I don't think they were able to film when he was actually <laughs> way up in the tree. But what you would normally do is you'd be way up in a fucking tree. You know, you'd have like a like you know some stakes on the tree that you climb up or whatever, and then you like attach yourself to a rope there, and you sit on a like a pipe or something. Now sometimes they'll have like a whole full treehouse, like a stand, like like Eli's talking about. But in this instance, they were just they just had some pipes. They were oh on shit. yeah, that's that's what was covered in wax. The the pipes that he was using to to climb the tree. Yeah yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, because as we saw it, it was just like he's he's on a little tether, so he could be like wee. <laughs> <laughs> like, <that's all. laughs> Boy, he's just bouncing after the deer. Boy, boy. <laughs> <laughs> he swings in and grabs it from above, like a like a silent Bob trying to get the pin. Yeah. So, but what's amazing to me about this is that they don't explain any of this within the movie. They expect you to know all this shit. So if you don't know how a deer blind works, it takes a long time to figure out that Dave's not hanging himself in this scene. Right? <laughs> There's a rope behind his neck going up into. The the tree. Yes, I, I was baffled by this. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're going to hurt yourself real bad somehow. <laughs> well, and he does. He does, right? Yeah, he might as well jump around too much like a dog and like hang himself. It's really close to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so he's sitting there up in his hunter jumper room or whatever, and he sees a deer come by and he's like, oh, this is a perfect killing deer. So he pulls back his bow and just as he fires the arrow, he falls out of the tree, he screams, and he's knocked unconscious. And I want him to be dead, and I wanted the rest of this film for, to, to just be his corpse slowly rotting, and I would have watched hours. I would just watch hours deer of this. Slowly not eating a his face. Mushroom is growing out of his skin. Yeah. <laughs> deer hangs him up and taking pictures, posting them on Facebook. <laughs> he's, he's quite badly injured. No deer are. The deer are one nil up at this point. The deer are winning. Yeah, right? Yeah. They're losing to the deer. <laughs> okay. But here's the best part. He gets knocked. First of all, if he's going to fall, I laughed for a while because he's like, Wah! and that was really funny. But then he like gets up and is like, ah, <laughs> ow, ow. <laughs> and that's it. Well, well, okay. So you're making it sound like this all was instantaneous. You're leaving out the fact that we watch him lay on the ground for I shit you not. 64. Four seconds. Mm -hmm. It's so long. Oh, and he was terrified. Who checked to see if they had accidentally paused? Did you guys all check to see if you had accidentally paused? <laughs> well, because they, no, they had the sound effects where you could hear the evil demons walking by behind the camera or something. I don't know what that was supposed to be. But yeah, but he goes and he looks in the tree and damn if he doesn't find a cross carved into the tree, but not just any cross, a stupid looking one like the necklace that he got for his wife. So is the implication here that she did it? 
Is she trying <laughs> to kill him so he can join her? Is that what's happening here? I, could, that would make sense, right? Because the, the candles were just supposed to be romantic. You know, she's trying to set the mood. <laughs> Turns out she went to hell after dying of cancer. <laughs> yeah. And she met up with demons and was like, hey, I've, like, I heard you guys are doing like this really subtle plan with like one candle at a time. I got, <laughs> I got an idea to build the moment. You add like a little, you know, cross. It's like this necklace you got me. He'll, he'll know what it is. <laughs> he'll, he'll, get know it. What it is. he'll get it. Okay. But here's the best part. Because it's a loopy, fancy cross, it also super duper looks like a dick with three balls. <laughs> so he's, he's gently stroking his thumb along it. And it it could also just be someone carving a dick with three balls. <laughs> it also kind of looks like two dicks with two balls or three three dicks in a yeah, ball. Yeah, but like there's the one like much longer appendage on it. So yeah, yeah. I see it. I see it. <laughs> All right, so now we cut over to Russ and Paul dragging a deer carcass back to camp. Apparently, Russ, the comic relief, has killed the deer finally. What is it with you guys and films with dead deers in? Like, is this another <laughs> film where they actually kill the deer? And honestly, Dead Deer Month is the weirdest theme month you guys do. <laughs> like, and it seems to come around earlier every year. You've barely taken the Christmas decorations down before. Yeah, it's Gam Dead Deer Month again. Yeah, right, right. Deer Corpstacular. I, I got I to think that it's just, it's it's not tasteful for us to do it on the same month as Black History Month. Okay, I just don't think that's right. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we watch him drag it down. And yes, I absolutely killed some fucking deer. I'm sure they killed some deer for this fucking movie, right? Mm-hmm. So they get back to the cabin with the dead deer and they come across Dave. He's sitting in his bedroom, weeping like Jacob Marley. <laughs> <laughs> Having an absolute mental breakdown. Yeah. And they keep rolling. They're like, this is really good <laughs> yeah. B-roll. This is great for keep our dude, Buck Hunter this show. Will be a, this will be a good setup for a later <laughs> ugly crying scene. I don't know. I don't know. Keep it. Of course, but but fucking Sean knows an opportunity when he sees one so he calls an audible and he swaps out the show they were gonna do for a ghost hunting show okay is that what he says it took me so long to figure he out he says ghost fever addict yeah cause it was buck fever addicts was the was the original oh. show oh I managed to figure it out like three scenes later, but I spent all three scenes trying to figure it out. Like it was some sort of crypt, like, like I was watching fucking a Dan Brown film or something like that. All right. It's Faust Giver Addicts. What does that mean? That means nothing. And apparently I have no idea what's supposed to be happening, right? Because Sean does like a hidden camera thing that he doesn't tell everybody else the camera's there. And then we just all watch him like argue about who had that SD card and then nothing happens, right? Yeah, why does he need to like hide the camera at all? It's not like they're at any point shy to be on camera. Right. They film every single minute of their waking lives like they're fucking Instagram influencers. Even the ugly crying. <laughs> He's doing a prank on the guy who was having a mental breakdown and his wife is dead and he's freaking out. That's what's happening right now, right? Yeah. It's, it's the best prank victim. <laughs> yeah, cause you're, you're right, though, because I think he's looking for the camera that Sean is using to secretly film them, isn't he? Yes, yeah. that's exactly yeah. what happens. And again, Dave, the guy who's just having a breakdown, starts freaking out about his demon cam is missing where he can show the evidence of how he got attacked by a demon. <laughs> and he starts flying around the house, tearing stuff up, throwing couches up in the air. And the prank guy's like, oh. This uh, prank went too far. I can't back out, though. <laughs> yeah. I have to just let this go. <laughs> Double down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the only thing that he can do is uh, start a website about, like, Dave freaked out in the cabin .com or something like that. <laughs> that's, that's what you do at this point in the prank, I think. <laughs> have, you, have you checked in your wife's grave for the camera? Huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Better dig her up. <laughs> well, hello, honey. It's me. <laughs> She's all slimy. It's hard to do puppet stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Which let not play out, yeah. <laughs> and then we cut to Paul hosing down a skin deer. Well, it's not just a skin deer. It's naked. It's tied up and it's hosed down. They've got the model down. <laughs> <laughs> it's his signature move. <laughs> Fatality. Yeah. It's also by far the scariest thing in this stupid fucking movie. Right, yeah, this whole fucking conversation, they keep this skinless deer in frame. Yeah, and they, they've got two cameras on it, and every time it cuts to one camera, that's basically like an upskirt cam of this dead-skinned deer. Yes. Every yes. single time, it's so weird. 
Yeah, it's it, so, but they're gonna have a a, a conversation about hey, like. Clearly, our friend is just having a complete mental breakdown. Should we pause the hunting expedition? No, we should. We should double down. We should just keep. Okay, all right, we're gonna keep. Yeah, going. man. What's right. better for you know a dead wife than overcoming demons while you kill a deer and flay them? As you can see right next to us, a flayed deer. Like that's <laughs> yeah, that's what they're doing. Yeah, maybe God wants our friend to have a nervous breakdown around a bunch of weapons. <laughs> <laughs> And one detail of his nervous breakdown is that Dave hugged Russell for two hours, which is a really weird detail to put in. Like, I mean, for one thing, why were we spared that footage? That sh They shoot everything else. Why not shoot the two hour long hug that Dave gave Russell? Right. But like, how did that two hour, how did the second hour of that start? Because at some point Russell's thinking, right, this is this is going to end about the hour mark, right? This is not, and then you get into the second <laughs> hour. And he's like, okay, no, hey, this look, is still man, going. I'm going to play, I'm going to play some Candy Crush around you. I'm still hugging you. I'm just looking over at my, at my phone now. I want to see how it ended as well. Just like a Russell, like, and anywho, is that, uh, is that the time? <laughs> no, I think, uh, I think I've got to really go hold down the carcass. This is really good so, B-roll. Uh, We're doing two hours. <laughs> I really wanted to cut to Russell and he's got unwrapped candy in a paper towel. See, this is why I keep my candy <laughs> wrapped while I'm <laughs> Yeah, so they're all sitting now trying to figure out what to do. You know, Russ wants to take him to a, a back home so he can get some help. Fucking Paul wants to strip him and chain him to a pipe overnight. And uh, <laughs> and, and, and Sean wants to pop scare the, the Jesus into him, apparently. But ultimately, they, have, they decide that what they're doing is working just great. They've got all the evidence to suggest that so far. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so they're going to keep going with that. And they're like, hey, Sean, just really quick. Uh, no more pranking the guy who's weeping out about his dead wife. Can we just like not prank him? <laughs> and he's, he's like, like fine. And, and, well, yeah, Sean's all bitchy about it. It's like, oh, well, I mean, we could, but do we have to? Is there? I don't see why we should. Not only is he bitchy, he's the guy holding the camera. So he said nothing during this entire conversation between Paul and Russell. And then they turn to him and say, yeah, so like stop being a dick to him. And, mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never going to see his wife again, but whatever. Yeah. That's <laughs> And so, and then, okay, we cut to Dave trying to walk us through all this footage that we saw already, <laughs> right? He doesn't have to convince us that he found the candle. We saw that footage, but he's like, this is where I found the first candle, and this is where I found the second candle. And as he's doing that, I guess Sean and, and Russ have found a large shed full of fucking Cracker Barrel wall decorations or something. Yeah, it's like a museum of uses of tin throughout the ages. That's what this is. <laughs> yes. And the, the entire point of this is so that Sean can do another pop. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's even through the window like that other one was. They can't even do a different fucking pop scare. <laughs> At this point, I'm actually genuinely more surprised when he's not doing pop scares, when he just walks casually into camera. I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we cut over to Dave. He's in the woods. His shit is fully lost at this point, right? And we know because he's going full mucus snorting, which is this movie's way of saying shit's gotten serious. Yeah, yeah. he's a, he's about to die of cancer, I think is what this yeah. movie's trying to <laughs> And then we get this amazing moment. Okay, I love this so goddamn much because what's supposed to have happened is he goes to check the area where he fell out of his deer blind the night before and he finds that that carving of the cross that was in the tree yesterday isn't there anymore. But these stupid fucking idiots didn't think to film that before they carved it into the tree. <laughs> so we just see him looking at it, but we don't see the spot on the tree where it isn't carved because they sat there for a long time trying to figure out how to uncarve a tree before they settled. You know they the spent spot. days trying to find a very similar tree yes, that they yes. carved it to. And it never even occurred to him that they could just Use a different tree and carve a new fucking cross, even. Yup. <laughs> so. The cross just has a black sharpie changing the shape a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Crossed off. It's just scribbled out. Yeah. All right. So Dave decides to go back to the cabin. And wouldn't you know it, while he's there, a big ass deer shows up. So he's going to kill it through the window. And look, if you're making a movie that's pro bow hunting, right? The only thing you need to not show is that bows fucking suck, which is why we invented guns. <laughs> and sometimes even when you're shooter of the marksman, you just 
stab a deer and it's like, ow, fuck, ow, and runs away. <laughs> As, as near as I can tell, and it's really hard to find the the actual statistics on this because trying to find any fucking stats on bow hunting is like trying to fucking interview somebody for be reasonable. But <laughs> as near as I can tell, about 82% of shots that are taken by bow hunters fail to kill the target. Now, I'm talking about the ones that hit the deer. Yeah. Jeez. Like 82% of the time, you just stab a deer that either slowly bleeds out over days or is just permanently injured. Yeah. So fucked up. Also, I was so excited that other people didn't know about the meh, meh thing. So Wait, is that real? Okay, yeah, that's a real thing when you deer hunt. Is you oh, make yeah. That, seriously? <laughs> yeah, what? that noise. So they look at you so you can get a clean <laughs> shot. In reality... In you reality. see a deer and you go, man, deer, sir, 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 <laughs> yes. deer. Man. Yeah, exactly. And they you say, you sir, and you sir, shoot deer. <laughs> to be fair, if you were walking along and someone went, man, you would be like, the fuck is that? And that's what the deer does. <laughs> so deer hunters are like, deer says what? And this really works. Yep. He looks up like, the deer looks up like someone just said his name. Like, like, but like, not said his name like he's, he actually knows him, but that, that you're talking to someone else who's got the same name and you look up and go like, oh, that's my name. <laughs> yeah, exactly, no one, exactly. That's the look that the deer's got. Yeah, the deer is, <laughs> well, he had the hello, my name is meh, meh on his, um, on his chest. I don't know if you guys saw that, but you can see it through the, um, the scope. Deer just keeps walking. No, thank you. No, thank you. I don't want your pamphlet. No. I don't want a CD. I don't even have a CD player. Who the fuck has a CD player anymore? <laughs> okay, so here's how I know about the Matt, Matt thing. I once, the only time I have been hunting, I went with an ex-girlfriend's father and was trying to impress him. You went hunting? Yeah, I was trying to impress my ex-girlfriend's father. How'd that go? <laughs> well, I'll tell you how it went. He did not inform me that he was going to go, Matt, Matt, at the deer. So I begin to laugh hysterically. Oh no. And the deer ran away and he was not allowed to murder it. And he was very cranky to me for the rest of the eight hour day of sitting oh, in no. a tree that we did. Oh, oh Jesus Christ. Hey, if you have a quiet based activity, do you need to warn someone, by the way, the only break of this quiet that we're going to have in this entire 12 hour day that begins at 5 a.m. is me going, meh, meh. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you definitely need to warn someone if you're about to make a sound like the Roadrunner's got laryngitis. Like, it's really important <laughs> to give people their heads <laughs> so, Yeah, so he mass the deer, he shoots it. And the deer runs off. But we, now we actually watch someone shoot a fucking deer with an arrow and the, and the deer run off. And he is ecstatic about what a great job he's done. Right. This actor and, and this is a this, you know, this is a movie made by people who know a little something about bow hunting is ecstatic that he did such a good shot. He says that after he watches the deer run away in terrible pain. Yeah. Mm. And he's like, ah, oh, blood trail. And I wrote in my notes, cool hobby. There are board games. Do these people know there are board games? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we spend a good few minutes of him excitedly following a trail of blood. And he's saying, that's why we're out here, folks. Yeah, to follow blood on leaves. Fuck <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, right. And he is orgasmically giddy about this. Mm -hmm. And we know there is no God as well. We absolutely know there is no God. Because if there was a God, just as he was about to take the shot, Pop scare the bald guy, bang, stab. stab. <laughs> the, 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 the way there's proof of the date. Or at least a coherent film writer. Right. All right. So now we cut to an hour later. We know this because he, he's looking right into the camera. He's like, so it's been about an hour since the last scene. I know? lost an hour of my found footage. It's been an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted him to die in the woods with a pop scare from the deer just as revenge. That's what I really yeah. wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Gets into a clearing, deer leaps in with a shotgun. <laughs> 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 no, go ahead. The deer's just like, Dave, human, Dave. human, human. And he stops and stares at the deer. <laughs> so, okay. But now he's, not only has he lost the blood trail, but damn it, if he's not just lost in the woods himself, I'm like, man, these motherfuckers have no idea how to woods. <laughs> you motherfuckers don't, you, you're trying to film a show about this? Yeah. Do you know what he could really do with? The only flair they brought with them. That would be a to about now. <laughs> Shouldn't have put my cell phone in the, in the basket. It's actually got a little... I could have just on. Fuck. turned the damn thing off. Seriously, a play school walkie-talkie solves this movie for them. <laughs> a compass? How 
how the fuck does no one have a compass? Jesus Christ, you fucking idiots. But yeah, so, but yeah, now we got him just wandering around in the dark in the woods, screaming his buddy's names, which is, by the way, not what you're supposed to do if you find yourself <laughs> lost in the woods in the middle of the night. Screaming like his mom turned the corner at TJ Maxx. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Jesus. So meanwhile, while he's doing that, Russ is mugging to the camera because that's all he does unless he's got a drowned child story to tell. <laughs> and he hears some screaming. And luckily for Dave, he doesn't just assume it's an evil demon and then ignore it until breakfast. This time he goes to check it out. <laughs> so and then we cut back to Dave. Dave hears the, the demon yell sound, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter again. Absolutely Dog the Bounty Hunter. Because it's Roar <laughs> Demon. If you listen carefully, it's Aloha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We, we, we learn here that his running scared face is even better than his standing still scared face. <laughs> Pretty cool. He falls down again. Yep. Doesn't he get another candle here? He sees another candle. Yes. And I was like, oh, brilliant. Because if he collects all five, I think he gets an extra life like Yoshi coins. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted Dear Demons to be making a YouTube show and have that be revealed here and that be the rest of the movie. Like, <laughs> zoom out meta. It's them hunting these dudes. Right. They just look into the camera. Man, 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 man. <laughs> Cuts to the Russell deer doing a bit with his body in the next morning for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a silly little hat on his antlers or something. Yeah, exactly. Mary's milk. <laughs> so yeah, but so he sees another candle 800 yards away, right? So we walk towards this candle for three and a half goddamn minutes of movie. And this one's sitting on top of that deer that he killed with his arrow. And his wife's necklace is hanging from the deer's antlers. Okay. I'm going to spoil this movie a little bit because I need to discuss the implications of this scene. Please. So what the movie is going to suggest to us in about 45 seconds is that Sean, Pop Scare Nazi, and Flame Guy have filled the air with hallucination gas or something to try and scare Dave straight back into, into loving God, which means that they found the deer he killed, put a candle on it, bought a copy of the necklace that he gave his dead wife and hung that on the deer's corpse. I don't think that's what the movie was going for at all. I don't think that's what all. the movie's no, saying. No, I, I, think, I think I'm with Eli. I didn't get the gas <laughs> bit. I never at any point noticed the gas bit until later Dog the Bounty Hunter says the word gas. And I wrote, hang mm -hmm. on, what gas? And I had to rewind <laughs> and realize I'd accidentally skipped an entire scene somehow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I never saw any gas. But the rest of it I'm, I'm on board with. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think like because... Otherwise, for, first of all, then none of the rest of this movie makes sense. I'm not that it otherwise Correct. does, but Correct. <laughs> but, but right. yeah, like th there are a lot of implications of that theory that really challenge everything else in the movie. I don't <laughs> think that's what they were going for. I think they're going for there were demons and there were and, demons. Yeah. yeah. OK, well, because at this point, like he's getting hung upside down and burned over demon flames and he apologizes to God and it all disappears. Yeah, there's like a big white light and then it all all disappears. And I actually wrote, first of all, this is an amazing prank if it's the bald guy again. And then I actually became <laughs> convinced that it was because we see the bald guy early on setting up the amazing hoist he's got for like hoisting deer up in the air really quickly so you don't so you can strip them rather than have to like spend some time. He's made his own hoist. So yeah. he's, he's done a hoist on Div and then they've got like a fire pit beneath him. He's not actually on fire, that, but all the threats right. off, the, off the side so we don't see it. I reckon that's what it is. Because later, and again, this is going to spoil what's coming up in a second, Dog the Bounty Hunter basically says, all of this stuff is possible. Apart from the white light, there is no way they could have done the white light bit. So all the rest of it was, was, was yeah, that's all very man-made, but there's no way man can make bright white light like, like they did in this kitchen. <laughs> well, he also says that the sounds were, you could, the humans could never make those sounds or whatever, but yeah. Right. That's fair. That's and, fair. and don't we see Sean and Russell also yes. like made unconscious by whatever this, the well, I, this I would is say going a demon up. that yeah. they're suggesting was yeah. there? Yes, mm -hmm. while this is all happening. So there's no way that could be what they were trying to go for with the plot. Now, I will say it's funny if it turned out to be like a fifth friend who didn't get invited and got angry and was doing a prank on all of them. <laughs> or the naked kid that they hosed out. It's the naked hose kid. <laughs> yeah, it's the pastor's yeah. son. 
Exactly. <laughs> and the pool kid. Right. Well, yeah, right. They both teamed up. Same kid. Yeah, they're actually, working together. Weirdly yeah. enough, it was the same dude. But right. So now we got Russ. He's like trying to figure out what's going on. He comes across both Sean and Paul cocooned in moss. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Having like a seizure or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and he's like, he's like, okay, you're just having a seizure. You'll be fine. I'll come back. I'll come back. I'll see if anybody's <laughs> in real trouble. I thought the moss was like uh, their camouflage, though. I thought they'd like, that, that's what the, they put moss on themselves in order to camouflage themselves in a bit. But then they were having a seizure for some reason, which admittedly the seizure <laughs> Unrelated. I don't know. If I wear a lot of moss, I start sweating and but- then the deer just <laughs> know what's happening. Okay. So. This is where my crazy theory comes from. And I'm sorry if you have to cut around this, if this is just me being insane. The camera goes over some pipes and Russ turns off the pipes. Yeah. Here Uh is what my brain created. Those pipes are filled with scarecrow gas. I know what you're saying. (laughs) Eli, this movie never introduced Scarecrow Gas. Mm -mm. That's a volunteer. That's not what I was going to say. I don't think that's the whole. I don't. Also, it's not a real thing, which is important. (laughs) That was what I was going to say. Thank you. Also, not a real thing. The Scarecrow Gas is what gives Sean and Preacher Guy the seizure and why Dave thinks he's on fire. So you think that the plot of this movie is that there is no God and it was all faked? It was all Scarecrow. No. Uh, my my idea is actually so much dumber than that. It's that his dead wife saw the scarecrow prank going too far, and she was like, "Okay, now I'm doing some divine intervention." And she used her magic dead lady powers to lower him down from the scary prank they were playing on him. So that all works, but it works even better if that's not a scarecrow gas tank because those things don't exist and is is made up entirely by Batman. <laughs> But if instead it's one of the propane tanks that they use to, to fire up the fire in the cabin, and that's where the fire that he sees is, they have little they, they basically have the propane fire there, and so they've got him strung up on the thing, and then they've got the fire on, and he's all scared by it, which is why he's, and he's moving around and he can't really get a good look at everything. And then something ends it with a bright white light that sends them into into, into seizures, and then y- y- your pole comes along and turns the stuff off. Right, right. No, no, and and keeping in mind though. That and 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 I, I guess I get where you're going. Like this is this is the the grown up version of tying him to the tree and naked and hosing him down overnight. But like then none of these characters are ever seen again, right? That that's yeah. As, as the movie that is an issue presents it. That is a pretty big hole in my theory. Yes. Yeah, that's that's the problem. Is that they ultimately that get the raptured by this bright light at the end. <laughs> so mm. and we learn all that. We should explain to the audience because. God knows they're more confused than they have to be at this point. <laughs> that this is all explained with the closing parentheses of the movie, wherein Dog the Bounty Hunter is. We go back to that interview that Dog the Bounty Hunter was doing at the beginning, where he explains what the hell we just watched. <laughs> right? Yeah. And it's important that you speak to Dog the Bounty Hunter about this because he once spoke to that guy's wife once. So he's the perfect person to interview right, exactly. on what happened in the woods. <laughs> Why? Why would so that now it's like a news show, right? They're trying yeah. to tell us that this is found news footage that's been spliced into this camera. <laughs> and they're like, all right, well, we've decided to interview Dog the Bounty Hunter about they they would better interview her hospital bed. The hospital bed <laughs> she died in. I also love the idea that they found all this footage and put it together and they're like, all right, let's keep the comic relief though. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's from multiple cameras as well. So they'd have to yes. cut it together into right. time. So they put a they put a timeline, a chronology, they cut away to see what was happening at the same time elsewhere. They really put <laughs> some work into this found footage, which they then apparently released to, in a sort of have you seen these men? I think that's what it's meant to be. Yeah. Because the people at the church got the footage and then handed it to Dog the Bounty Hunter because A, he knew them and B, he hunts bounties for a living so he can now hunt these men down and find them. Right. Which is why Dog the Bounty Hunter has gotten into it, I think. Yeah. Also, Eli, uh, in fairness to your theory, thank you. The movie is saying that this was made by God. God made a YouTube show called Buck Fever Addicts to teach a lesson (laughs) to one guy (laughs) is what the movie is saying. Anything that says not that, I'm going to give you a point for. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. You're Theory is less ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, Batman gas is like scarecrow grass is more realistic than God. I will give you That's that. That's correct. <laughs> correct. What I love in this as well is, as Dog the Bounty Hunter explains it, he does say how the stuff you've just seen couldn't have been man-made. 
but it was a fictional film. It so, is a film. <laughs> right. We know it wasn't real. And he's saying the stuff you've just seen couldn't have been made. So I, I don't know that Dog the Bounty Hunter doesn't know it isn't real. I that, think he oh, thinks this is real. You took the words he right out of my mouth, Marsh. <laughs> my final theory <laughs> is, why I got is that Dog the Bounty Hunter... <laughs> Produce this movie and put it out into the world, and does not know it is a movie. <laughs> all right, all right. That so that makes a ton of sense. I have to point this moment out, and this is why it makes a ton of sense to me. Because at one point, the lady says, "So, what do you think happened?" And he says, "Well, to speculate now, you'd have to be kind of a fool." And I'm looking at this guy and the hair too, <laughs> and the unbuttoned shirt, and the glasses over his false forehead eyes, and I'm like, "Yeah, I wouldn't want you to look foolish." <laughs> And then he immediately speculates as to what Yes, exactly, exactly. (laughs) And he's like, but I'm almost positive there was divine intervention. (laughs) Yeah. And then she asks him one more question. She's like, so yeah, okay, final question. Why? (laughs) (laughs) And he's like, I don't know. Everybody keeps asking me that. I don't know. I don't know. God, God's good at YouTube. Yeah, well, here's his answer. I think God is showing someone something Mm. or maybe more than one person yeah god's got it this film basically ends it basically ends with these guys fucked around and played a prank which accounts for like 99 percent of all of it but then there was this really bright light which could only have been god that's dog's basic summary of this because bright light is impossible for people to make right and there are films i've fallen asleep during that have ended less abruptly and made more sense than the end of this film <laughs> and I woke up and said, oh they're there now yeah that, i guess that makes sense but this i watched the whole thing and it made no sense to me All right, so I I had this question written in already, but I think it's even more pertinent given all of these new theories that are floating around. So I want to try to finish off by examining this from the perspective of its intended audience. So imagine that you're a devout Christian, so much so that you watch this movie, not ironically, and you've got a buddy who's maybe backsliding in his commitment to Jesus, your Lord and Savior. According to what you've learned from this movie, what should you do? Oh, you handcuff him to a playground set and you (laughs) fuck him with a hose, right? Strip him, cuff him, and hose him. The three-step solution to any problem. (laughs) Guys, strip him, cuff him, and hose him is already taken. Yeah, unfortunately. I have bookmarked it. (laughs) Cuff him, strip him, and hose him? But strip him, cuff him, and hose him dot gov is a mail. <laughs> no, that's a uh, so, so government agency doing this. No, that's, that's the site I, I think for that's Gitmo. redirects to the CIA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And of course, if anybody would like to hear more from Marsh, be sure to check the show notes for links to his other shows. Marsh, thank you so much for hanging out with us again. Thanks for having me, guys. Always fun, always fun. And while that does it for our review of Hunter's Creed, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lure you back next week. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, you are off for your birthday next week. And when the cat turns 45, the mice will play. So Heath and I will be reviewing the extremely Christian movie. Okay. Drive Angry, starring Nicholas. Cage. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, so I'm going to so miss happy. Nick Cage voice on my birthday. Damn it. All right. Well, I, I, I'm not sure how I feel about that. But with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 289 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Michael Marshall and a perhaps even huger thanks to the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist Citation, Need a D&D Minus, and The Skeptograd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Rise Not of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. The candle store guy admitted that the whole thing got away from him. <laughs> Dog the Bounty Hunter is still unclear whether this was actually a documentary and is still out there looking for days. <laughs> <laughs> Bambi would go on to become the great prince of the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever got attacked by a demon at board game night. <laughs> <laughs>
completely context. <laughs> is there context for that? that you know, I don't know. I don't, know. I don't, know. <laughs> don't ask questions, Mark. Unless you know the answer. <laughs> Basic lawyering. All right. <clears throat> Interstitial 1B. I know Morgan, but that's how he's got it listed. <laughs> Right. Marsh's redneck voice needs to come back. That's right. Absolutely. Because he's from the <laughs> old west. the seat of a panther. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of it's southern, but also old west as well. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. A little bit Italian, like spaghetti western. Yeah. 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 Italian. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.